this summer, I traveled to India on a two-month internship where I taught HIV education in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Now, look at me. <laughs> this is kind of an eat, pray, love story. See, I grew up in a quiet, closed-off, middle-class neighborhood. It was the type of place I never borrowed a cup of sugar, the get off my lawn, you damn millennial toddler type of place. I think I grew up with people who cared about themselves. And I looked around and I thought, why? You have people on the sidewalk begging for money treated as if they're invisible. Women being catcalled because a man wants to feel powerful. Racially charged slurs still ringing in the streets and schools and sometimes campaigns of our country. And one time I asked my mom about this, after I'd seen Blood Diamond, the movie depicting Civil War in Sierra Leone, and I was sobbing and I said, how can this happen and nobody does anything? And she looked at me and she said, the world is too big to do it all, honey. Which felt like I could do nothing. But it didn't take me long to realize that wasn't what she meant. No, she meant I had to pick my battles. And yet, today in America, I think we see the opportunity to do it all or do nothing. Well, this is the very nature of polarization. It's either complete freedom or you're censoring our rights. And there's this misconception that we either must ban all guns or allow all guns. We must have complete freedom of speech, including hate, slurs, and threats, or none at all. And this is simply not true. The American Constitution was founded on compromise, on understanding. Now, this brings me back to my summer in India. While well, I watched the people I met, people with less wealth than most of my friends at home, give themselves selflessly to others. I started to notice these small acts as methods of active hospitality. See, my friends in India didn't worship material wealth, so they chose to fight their battles with kindness. And to me, these norms of kindness and hospitality are essential in the American ideals of striving for equality of existing as a melting pot. Yeah, we can't have it all. No one can. But we can win more battles if we stick together. Empathy, active hospitality, these are our strongest weapons as individuals to redefine the American dream. Now, I have a friend who's been through nine years of severe depression. Recently, the political state of America has been affecting her. She feels our country is tearing apart, split by violence and politics. About a month ago, she sent me a text. It said, every day I wish I was in heaven. I don't want to be part of a world full of such misery and hate. I'd rather kill myself and let my parents live their lives. Now, I don't think that instilling a stronger sense of empathy will cure depression. No, but I know that the happiest I've ever seen her has been when she's felt supported by friends, family, and even strangers. And without this communal support, she would have given up years ago. Now, the fact of the matter is, everybody's lives are better when they live in a community that makes them feel like they matter. And it is the easiest battle every day to make commonplace the idea that caring for strangers is natural and admirable. So let's restore this American dream of empathy. I have learned from the people I met that each second is a chance to spread kindness and love. And with it, we must restore active hospitality. Caring for strangers, like you, and you, and even me. Because the future of the American dream depends on it. Thank you.